In these accounts, confidentiality has been maintained by altering certain details so that individual patients and staff cannot be identified. The accounts do not relate to one particular ward, emergency department or hospital trust. All events have been appropriately reported within the hospitals and to the CQC where necessary. The Chief Executive sent a letter out to every member of staff in the hospital informing us that there was going to be a universal block on recruitment for four months and that there was going to be targets set to reduce the use of agency staff in the hospital. In the letter, it told us that every staff must use their skill and judgment to maintain patient safety, which would remain the Trust's main target. He also went on to say that he thought that this Trust could be the best in the country and possibly the world. This letter shocked me and worried me because I was already concerned about staffing levels on the ward about how stretched we were as nurses on a day-to-day -day basis. People going off sick because it was too stressful, which reduced numbers even further. And for him to suggest that we were going to have even less staff, but still maintain patient safety, seemed unrealistic to me, and I was extremely concerned about it. I decided, as always, in line with my Nursing and Midwifery Council Code of Conduct, to raise my concerns in line with the trust protocol. So I went through the line management system um, and in doing so they responded by telling me that our trust was trying to become a foundation trust that would give them more freedom to manage their own finances and they wouldn't be managed centrally. Um, in order to do this they had to prove that they had effective management techniques. These were measured by certain targets that they had to meet. For example, how effectively they manage cost. I was told that our trust currently was in a deficit of £14 million and that we had to save money. I was also told that our trust didn't attract enough patients in order to make more money. So each ward had a responsibility to save money and cut costs. The trust as a whole had to attract more lucrative morbidities such as obesity because bariatric surgery receives more governmental funds and basically we must act more like a business. I think senior managers behave like this because they concern themselves with budgets and their strong belief is that if the hospital has more money that patient care will improve. But no one ever dares to question this paradigm. Is that actually the case or not? And in earning more money, they very often have to make cost-cutting measures. Um, I witness on the ward as being detrimental to patient care. So, when I tell them about this, they don't really want to hear it, as it goes against what they believe and what they think is the right thing to do. So, instead of listening to my concerns and thinking, oh, okay, this must be down to our management decisions and, and uh, things that we're instigating across the trust, instead they say, ah, oh, I think it must be down to individuals. It's your ward sister who's the problem. Oh, it's just your ward. Or, in fact, it's just you. They always have quantifiable graphs and charts that they can show you at the drop of a hat um, to, to prove what I'm saying isn't true and what they're saying is true. And unfortunately for me, my stories can often be belittled as wishy-washy nursing worries. Well, at no point did I doubt that the managers had a passion for improving patient care. However, I did doubt their ability to understand what's actually happening on the shop floor. And the idea of running the hospital like a business and focusing on cost and cost-cutting measures was not the way forward. As a nurse, my aim is always patient care. And surely this is what we should be focusing on, not touting for custom, 
trying to cut costs and other financial orientated things. I felt shocked that the government wanted hospitals to run like businesses. I felt that we should be focusing on improving quality of care, not touting for more custom. And I couldn't understand how we could become a world-class trust if we weren't, in my opinion, achieving basic nursing care for patients on a daily basis. And there was a perception that staff should be interested in the national perceptions of our trust and that being a world-class service was in one of our priorities when, in fact, my priorities were much more local. I'm happy if I've managed to wash all my patients who want to wash on a daily basis, that I've managed to give them pain relief when required. And if I'm not achieving this, then whatever national perceptions the Trust has will make no difference.